All right, grab a pen, pencil, anything, and some paper. Maybe some really nice stuff, but if not, it doesn't need to be good, or even really especially purposefully chosen. A napkin will do, if you must. And let's draw for 10 minutes. Let's get it done. Whatever else happens today, we will know we drew, that we stuck to the habit. I'm very surprised by people who want to boil drawing down to something that's completely practical and graspable. There's a tough attitude that often comes along with that mentality, but that's not really what bothers me. I understand that for some people, the only way they were going to make the climb up that sheer rock face of drawing was to insist it was a science. That if they did this, then they would get that and done. But that's just a lens. It's just another filter. And they often muster a lot of conviction for this particular materialistic lens because it is supported by the scientific and linguistic moment of our current culture, here in the U.S. at least. And I used to be like that, actually. I, I know how compelling that mindset can be because I lived it for many years, many years. I really was convinced that I don't know how to put it, maybe like greatness. I was convinced that greatness was achievable through definable steps. And I was so focused on those steps, I didn't even take a minute to think about how weird it was to desire greatness in the first place. <sighs> to be young again, right? The arrogance, the confidence. Someone bottle that. Got to get that in a bottle, man. Truly, there's still plenty of times where I feel like I'm aiming towards a lofty goal like greatness, but at least now I have the good sense to be disgusted by it. I don't want to deny the usefulness of the instruction that has come from this mindset and the artists that ascribe to it. Their view has produced some of the clearest, most precise drawing instruction available. It has that quality because it has so much conviction behind it. It presents the information confidently and succinctly because it comes from a belief that there really is an answer and this is it. And to follow these instructions and even to drill them when necessary, and it's often necessary to drill them, really does provide understanding and a grasp of the technicals. And that's great. I mean, we all have to do our fair share of that. The problem is when you then close off to everything beyond that. If you say, well, this produces improvement, and since improvement is everything, this is all you need to worry about. Uh-huh. Technical improvement is great, but for that to be your whole concern... That turns drawing into, well, I'm not sure, some sort of science race board game. I don't know. Uh, the closest parts of it that are like that, you know, the sciences of the understanding of light, anatomy, what makes appealing shapes, what makes appealing value hierarchies. They're tricky. You think there's answers to these things and, and that they only need to be observed and codified. But the objective parts of those are never enough. The objective is not enough to keep us feeling whole and integrated with our practice. It doesn't give us a sustainable meaning to it. Because we need to make that meaning ourselves. And it can't come from anything objective outside of us. Art has another side. We encounter it intuitively. Usually, it's hard to put into words what that other side is, but it's something like the part of art that teaches you about yourself. This other aspect of art doesn't concern itself with the quality of the final. It doesn't run the checklist program to see if this piece has all the qualities of a good piece. This other aspect isn't concerned with the externals. This other part of art is mirror-like. 
and invites reflection. It's always there when all the other processes are running. It's underneath them. And it offers up insights over the years, whether you want them or not. But it's also possible to experience it directly, to open a conversation with this aspect of art. And when you do that, it can actually have components that are intellectualized and conceptualized in very much the same way that the conversation about technicals is. Unfortunately, there is almost no instruction on this, either online or in schools. It only sounds weird because of the time we happen to live in, which is a tiny reverse time where the hard points are what's emphasized. It's a little frustrating, that, because you can try to get others to open to this and there can be a lot of initial resistance sometimes and you wish you could show people that over the course of time, this reflective aspect of art was the norm and that our position is the anomalous one. But people's foundational intuitions are a hard thing to overcome. It's not for everyone, but if you take an education in this reflective aspect, with a teacher or as a course of discipline you outline for yourself, you will find many interesting insights. And these are useful because once the insights of how light works and where muscles go have run dry after 15 or 20 years, these new insights add interest to this long burning, smoldering fire and they keep your energy and your career going. I mean, isn't that the most practical thing in the world? It's an antidote to burnout. If you want to get started on this course, which is beyond the scope of this video, just try letting your art speak to you. What came up the moment you heard me say that? What was your gut reaction to that slightly cringy sentence? How seriously do you take your gut cringes? How much do you let them arbitrarily define your interests? Your initial reaction to that statement says a lot about your appetite for these kinds of reflective pursuits. And like I said, it's not for everyone. If you didn't recoil in cultural disgust hearing something like that, you might be interested to know that down that road are insights as hard won and practically applied as perspective or anatomy. Down that road is something more akin to the science of your personal creativity than the science of drawing. It also has a much older, archaic, lineaged tone to it. Engaging art in that way really makes you feel grounded in what you're doing. It kind of takes the nihilism away. It can kind of creep up sometimes. Not for the artists who naturally have the attitude and personality to just do art happily and without too much overthinking it. They'll think that this is all kind of disgusting and unnecessary to talk about. But uh, they just have no personal experience with how painful this rather joyous practice can become for many artists. Forgive them. The blissful can never understand the beleaguered. Just let your art talk to you. Whatever you think that means. This is your path. So it's up to you to find out what your work is trying to give back to you. And all you have to do to build on that, to get better at that, is draw for 10 minutes. And look at that. Another 10 minutes gone. Thank you for drawing with me. I don't know if you understand how immensely helpful what you're doing is. If your little 10 minute practice feels small and miserable in the scope of your room alone, that's just the narrow view. As a group of people offering this up, taking time out of their day, every day, to remind themselves that their life is theirs and that they can control 10 minutes completely.
that they can make a space for themselves every day where all is well. That's not small. That's important. And every person who does it cleans up that little corner of this collective experience. And that's vital. Let's draw again soon.